Welcome to the London Business School Willard Institute for Business and Development COVID-19 series. Today, we are very pleased and honored to have with us uh, our own Alex Edmonds. Alex serves as Professor of Finance at the London Business School and he also uh, serves as the Academic Director of the Centre for Corporate Governance. Now, Alex has written a lot about various issues actually uh, in finance. He has been working a lot on the purpose of firms. Uh, he has uh, just released a book about growing the pie and how uh, corporates can deliver both purpose and profits. But today we want to chat with uh, Alex about corporate responsibility in the era of COVID-19. Alex, thanks a lot for taking the time and being with us today. Thanks for the inv invitation, Elias. It's great to be here. You know, as an economist, you know, I'm always getting a bit confused about corporate social responsibility. So can you please enlighten me a bit uh, uh, with uh, given your work? Absolutely. So, so what is corporate social responsibility? So it's traditionally seen as the actions that a company can do to serve wider society. But actually, I think in 2020, that's the wrong question. So CSR is typically seen as something that could be delegated to an ancillary department. And often it might be used as marketing to apologize for the fact that your core business might not actually be creating value. So even a tobacco company could be doing CSR if it uses its profits to donate to charity. So instead, what I like to do is to move sort of the conversation towards what I call responsible business, which is, is the core way that a company is making its profits also a way which is serving society? And so why I think that's quite different is that's about the core business, that's fundamental to how the company is run, rather than just an external ancillary marketing exercise. So can you give me, I think I get the idea. So it's not marketing, it's something deeper. So can you give me a couple of examples, please? Yes, and I, so what I think is really important about responsible business is it should be linked to a company's comparative advantage because then you can achieve the most bang for buck. So one example of what I think is, is CSR, rather than responsibility, is the initiative in India where 2% of profits need to be given to CSR activities, such as donating to charity. Now that might seem great, but the problem with that is that company's expertise might be in making food or making clothes, it's not choosing what charitable organizations to support. Because if instead of donating to charity, let's say you and I are both shareholders of the company, instead that company could give us higher dividends and we could choose which charities to support ourselves. It's not for the company to make that decision. But instead, what do I think is an example of responsible business? So to use a development example, Coca-Cola, has a initiative called Project Last Mile. So what this does is it makes sure that vaccines are available everywhere in Africa, including the difficult last mile to a rural school or hospital. Now that uses Coca-Cola's comparative advantage. Why? Coca-Cola is great at making sure Coca-Cola is ubiquitous in Africa, including in rural areas. So if they're so good at logistics, they're now going to use that logistics for vaccines. And here's the really nice thing, because you might think, why don't they transport books? Because literacy is a challenge in Africa. Well, the nice thing about vaccines is that they need to be transported cold. And Coca-Cola has expertise in refrigerated transportation. So that, I think, is great, because that's about you using your comparative advantage to get most bang for buck, rather than CSR, which might be just looking at whatever the order of the day happens to be. Maybe it's climate change. You might think, well, let me donate to a climate change charity. But no, for Coca-Cola, they think, well, given our expertise, what we want to address is vaccination in, um, in Africa. Now, that's a great example. But I know that you have been a big advocate of that before COVID-19 in your, in your like, I guess, the past 10 years or so. So how does COVID-19 change that? Does this change or does it further in, enhance the need to have companies with a purpose? I think it further enhances the need. So even before COVID-19, there was the concern that companies were serving um, just shareholders at the expense of wider society. And that was problematic for at least two reasons. So first, this led to a lot of unrest against companies. So people arguing for perhaps greater restraint on companies, lots of regulation, there was Extinction Rebellion and the like. But the second 
is actually, even in the absence of external pressure, there is research such as my own by our colleague Yanis Yanu and others suggesting that it's actually in a company's interest to serve society because doing so ultimately makes a company more sustainable and more profitable. And I think what COVID-19 has done is it just further accentuated that because it's shown that businesses can have a massive effect on people's lives. So there are some companies which are doing things such as donating food and sanitizer, which could tra change, transform lives of people. And there's other companies which might be still extracting value. So there's the concern that Sports Direct was continuing to ask their employees to come to work, and that was just un unsafe. And so given that this has just led to a, an even greater acknowledgement of companies' effect on society, so it's not just wages and climate, which are important, but it's now lives, then I think now companies now acknowledge uh, this need. And so we've seen some great responses in the crisis of companies seeing what they can do to help wider society. Thanks. So my last question, which actually is a question that I'm asking all of the friends and colleagues who have joined in the COVID-19 series of the Wheeler Institute, is what can business more concretely do today? And we understand that governments have stepped in. There's a lot of discussion about Central Bank, about Congress in the US or Parliament in the UK. But what is the role of business more concretely uh, in those months, quarters, years to come? So I think uh, the role of companies is to think about what gifts of unequal value they can give. So what do I mean by that? Well, in finance, right, what we teach our students is we think about assets of equal value. A, a stock worth £100 will trade for cash worth £100. But I think the core to solving and um, solve social problems is thinking about what we have of unequal value. Anything that we can give to society which has a much greater impact than what it costs us. So in some cases, it could involve donating products such as food and sanitizer, where the cost of production is much lower than the value that this has to the recipient. But another example is how we treat workers. So there have been companies which have unfortunately had to make the really tough decision to downsize. So one example here is Airbnb. But how they've responded to that is in a very humane way. So in terms of the employees they've had to let go, what they've tried to do is to think about what can we do to minimize the, uh, the loss suffered by the employees. So what Brian Chesley has chosen to do is to say, well, we're going to continue to pay the healthcare expenses of the displaced employees for one year because healthcare is going to be even more important right now than ever any other time previously. We're going to let them all keep their laptop because that's going to be really important for them finding other jobs. We're going to redeploy our recruitment um, arm to becoming an outplacement arm to help these people uh, find alternative jobs. And again, that's something where there's a huge comparative advantage of doing that because they know their employees much more than any external outplacement agency. So just rethinking sort of what are the resources that we have in our hand and how can we have this multiplicative, multiplicative effect by redeploying them to uses where the benefit to society is much greater than the cost to ourselves. Alex, thank you very much for taking the time. I also urge our viewers to have a look and buy your great book, Growing the Pie. Uh, it has many examples like those, and I really hope that soon we'll be uh, seeing each other and uh, exchanging ideas about these fascinating issues. Alex, thanks a lot for taking the time. Thanks very much, Elise. It's great to be here.